Hey guys, I'm Marcus and this is Dicefall Studios. Today we've got a special one. Uh, I have been invited to Bristol Independent Gaming here in Bristol uh, by my mate Jim uh, to do an unboxing video of the new Games Workshop's Warhammer Quest, Curse City. Um, Jim, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, um, so uh, I'm Jim, um, uh, co-owner with, uh, with my partner of Bristol Independent Gaming. Um, we've been here for about six and a half years, got a really good hobby shop, um, stock loads of Warhammer, D&D, &D, miniatures, paints, you name it, we've probably got it or I have access to it. Um, so you can check out our website, um, uh, we also do commission prints for 3D printing now and uh, commission painting as well. So check out the web, web store, um, which is uh, just, yeah, if you put in Bristol Independent Gaming, um, dot yep. co, it should bring it up. I'll, uh, I'll add a link uh, yeah. at, the bo at the bottom of the video guys, there'll be a link that goes straight to their uh their online store and their Facebook group. And you can check out all of Jim's painting. Jim's a really good painter. Um, and I've seen their 3D printing and it's pretty uh, it's pretty spot on. Uh, you'll see some of that coming up in a future video as well. So without further ado, I think we should get into this box. Yeah, let's open it. So it's got a really nice box art. Um, it's got the whole cursey art that we've already seen. Um, I really like this art style. It's very... Very Hellboy esque, uh, I think. But let's have a look at the back. I'm gonna have a quick butchers at the contents. So we've got all nice full pictures of all the bad guys, what the game would look like, uh, a brief rundown of what comes in the box, and all the other bits and bobs that you would normally see on these kind of boxes. So let's get cutting into this. Uh, when you're doing this, be very careful. Knives are sharp. Uh, I'm sure you, like everyone else, don't want to get cut. Um, right. What does it smell like, Marcus? It's... It smells like victory. It smells like victory. <laughs> <laughs> smells like victory. <laughs> Comment down below if you know what that movie's from. If you know what that quote's from. Right. So let's start with the heroes. Uh, all the heroes in this box are now coming in a kind of beigey plastic as opposed to the like red or blues or whatever games workshop want to use nowadays uh, so let's start with this first brew so this one has our dwarven sky captain so that's, uh, that's dagny holdenstock yeah um he's rocking a pretty hefty like harpoon gun uh i'm sure that's going to be very useful uh, and a metal beard protector, which you've got to protect our beard. I mean, it's the most important thing ever. Um, I mean, I wasn't massively keen about this mini to begin with, but now I'm looking at it in person, I can see a lot of like really nice detail, um, especially with that that coat. That's a mighty fine coat. Maybe if he'd had the uh, face protector covering his entire face, he wouldn't then need the little eye thing. Yes, you know. Foresight, it's a superpower. Mm -hmm. Right, well, let's move on from him to my personal favourite, the ogre of the uh, of the box. Uh, he is... Rupt, uh, was it? Uh, Bru Brutog Corpse Eater. Brutog Corpse Eater. This guy is just pain train incarnate. Um, he's a really nice sculpt. He's got some really nice details going on with him. Um, yeah. It's a little bit more sort of like old school ogre, I would say, than the... Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, very, sort of like, Mordheim style ogre. Mm. Um, I, I honestly thought that's where they were going to go with it, um, but I'm quite content. 
doesn't have with a what, we got, what we got here. No, he's a very lean ogre. Mm. Right. Then on to the next brew. So next we got the everyone's favourite vampire hunter, if I can find him myself on the sprue. <laughs> he's on here somewhere. Well, there's part of him. The unfortunate thing with these sprues, guys, is they have... They've not made it very... Everything's in sections. So what they've done with other other the uh, other products, they've kind of just put them wherever they fit, which is great for space saving and stuff. But it's not very useful, not very helpful for anyone who's just trying to get the one mini they want off of it. Yeah. Well, it's Jelson Derrock that you're looking for. Yeah, so we've got part of him here, part of him there. We've got his epically huge sword and the hammer. Um. His gun is around here. There it is. How can you miss his hat? Oh, his hat's here. He's, it's right there. Uh, and we got the, the infamous big gun that everyone's going to love using. Uh, and next up, we are going to be looking at uh, our wood elf character. So we got her head and antlers here, her back fear, quill. Yeah, she's a pretty nice mini. I think, I think I've seen a lot of people actively saying that they like this one. Prolactus the Exile. Yeah. She's a Sylvaneth. She's a Sylvaneth, is she? That's what it says. Oh. That's one of the keywords on here. Ah. I thought all the Sylvaneth were, um, were trees. I could not... They have been up until this point. They've all been trees, haven't they? Oh, maybe she is a tree. She's not a tree. You could paint her like a tree, I guess. <laughs> She's not a tree. It she... says Silver F on here, so... Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, who we got next in the cards? Uh, we have... Glario Van Alten. Which one's that? Glario, um, that is the guy that looks um, very much like a um, road trader. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. By far one of the cooler poses Glorio. for a mini. And I think it's called Glorio. It? Yeah, I believe he's um, one of the main protagonists for this setting. Uh, I think something to do with the backstory is that he and his, well, his family caused a lot of this trouble that's happening in Altdorf. Um, and yeah. So what he has, he is a prince and he has got his path to glory, I'm not too sure what that is, but it is reclaim the city, so I'm guessing that yes, he is part of the, uh, the nobility of uh, Ulfen Khan. Yeah. I mean, hopefully with this, they might even release some more, uh, some more model models from this region, which would be quite nice, because everyone loves... Bear cavalry. <laughs> they've um, they've done that on the old world um, thing, haven't they? They showed that they're going to have kids of bear cavalry in the uh, Total War Warhammer Three. The, the, yeah, they've put Kislev in, um, and yeah, bear cavalry is a thing. So I will be jumping on that when that is released. Uh, next up, we have uh, Cleona Zetengale. Uh, Zetengale. Ah, that is our uh, She's a pre master. a lawmaster. So that'll be this one here. Got it's collar. yeah, because all wizards have huge collars. She's not a wizard. She's a lawmaster. It says here. Isn't doesn't that just make her a wizard? I don't know. To be honest with you. <laughs> um, but yeah, she has really big collar, really big headdress. Um, and a stark of yeah. celestial devastation, apparently. Yeah, she's also got a mighty mace right next to it, so I'm assuming when the staff doesn't do it, it just gives him a good old whack. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see the mace, yeah, okay. Cool. Uh, it is a thrice blessed mace. Thrice blessed? Thrice blessed, mate. All right, That's so we've only, we've only got two left now. So yes, yeah, she is a wizard, because the next one is another wizard. 
Well, he doesn't have a hat, so I don't think he's a wizard. Ah, but he has the mightiest of beards. He does, but no hat. No. But I don't, I, I don't know if, you know, depending on your level of wizarding, is it the beard or the hat that de 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 the hat. determines? Yeah. That's the hat. I mean, Gandalf had a hat. Sar Saruman didn't have a hat, though. Well, yeah, and look what happened there. <laughs> See? Well, there you go. Saruman had a hat. Well, there we go, guys. You know, not to play this guy. <laughs> well, Octron Glimstry. Yeah. That's his name. And, yeah. <laughs> With the most epic beard there has ever been. He also has an attack called Hollow Stare. It's that hundred yards there, is yeah, it? I think yeah. So. He seems a bit um, necromantic, this dude. Yeah, a bit, bit, bit dodgy. I think he is a bit dodgy. I think he is a bit on the Saruman side, there, mate. Yeah. Yeah, he is uh, certainly operating in the uh, in the grey area. I'd have said oh. not necessarily in the uh, in the light area. And then our last one we have will be our. Brave Captain Emil, Emelda, sorry, Captain Emelda Braskov. And she's a pretty cool mini. If you're looking for like a nice tanky looking like character, I don't think you can go far wrong with it. Um, I mean, she's cladded in full plate. She's got a really cool like fur cloak on the back. It looks like a an eagle or it's like a, or I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure she probably just killed a griffon. Oh, poor griffon. I know, but they do make cool cloaks. Apparently so. <laughs> but yeah, she's human as well. Yeah. She would if you wanted to play um, uh, if you were an RP uh, female paladin type. Oh, definitely. Type. She'd be awesome for that, wouldn't she? Yeah, for sure. There isn't really a huge amount of stuff that makes her, that grounds her specifically in the Warhammer world. No. There's a couple of comets, but that could be for anything. Yeah, I mean, she's got the Twin Twelve comets, but yeah, that could literally be anything. Right, so next up, we're going to hit up the, uh, the boss monsters. Uh, so we'll get to that. Right, so now let's have a look at our, uh, our boss monsters. So to start off with, we will start with uh, the shoveler himself. Gorslav the Gravekeeper. I mean, he's pretty hench for what is effectively like some kind of necromance, necromancy grave digger. He's a big model. He's going to be hench. Have you seen, mm. one, he's digging graves, and two, he's digging graves with the most... <laughs> Ineffective shovel. <laughs> I I like the shovel. I don't I don't I don't think it's actively I think there it's for digging. Very cool, but I think it's a rubbish shovel for digging graves with. <laughs> right. So next up on the list, we have um, the man with all the pets. Oh, uh, Tor Gilius the Chamberlain. And yeah, he's rock. He's got his his bats, his rats, his carrion birds. Um, he's a pretty cool little mini as well. Um, he'd make a pretty cool bad guy model for most settings if you were going to use him for anything else. Yeah, uh, he'd make a good little necromancer. Yeah. For, yeah. 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 I think that's a nice thing about a lot of these models is that. It would work really well if you wanted to use them as just a straight roleplay. I can imagine that's what most people are going to do with this box set. They're going to buy it, play the game, and um, yeah, use these for their D and D games. Well, if you want to do like a Ravenloft type setting, or uh, oh, definitely, yeah, for sure. There, oh yes, definitely. So, right, there you go. Future goals: going to use these for Ravenloft. Which which version of Ravenloft? Uh, not the revamped version. Yeah? Oh. No. Okay. We have a discussion about the revamped version. But... Yes. Um, right, so next up we have the 
orcs that aren't orcs. Orcs aren't orcs. Oh, hang on, I've got to find it. The nope. uh, Kasagi Night Guard. Yeah. And these guys, these guys are massive. They will tower over most things. They do look like orcs, so I think they might be orcs. I, see, I don't, I don't know. I, it might just well, be the... Why are they undead orcs? It might, it, it, they might be. It might be just the way that they've zombified them. Mm, they do have huge bardiches. But now the faces, they, they, look, they look quite orky. Mm. Yeah, I think that... I think that might just be through the uh, the rotting process. You know, the nose falling off makes them look a little bit more like orky pigmen type thing. I don't think you're allowed to refer to orcs as pigmen. I mean, like... I don't think you're allowed to do that anymore. No? no. Is, is, is that not allowed? No, I think there's possibly people out there that identify as orcs and the orc kin. Oh, dear. Or orcs. No, that's a different thing, isn't it? No, I'm pretty sure orcs are now known as... Orcs, or orcs are known as Olocs. Olocs. No, Olocs. Orocs. Orocs. There you go. Right, next up on our list, let's get out of that. We don't, we don't need that. Uh, is the skeleton captain. Watch Captain Halgrim. And, yeah, he's a really cool-looking skeleton character. There's not really much you can say about that. He's got an eye patch. He's got an eye patch. I don't know why. What's the reason? What's hi hiding behind the eye patch? Uh, we, we maybe, maybe that's why you use this guy for your games. He might have some hi There might be treasure behind that eye patch. Yeah, you, you, you know there'll be players out there who will be wanting to know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But yes, so Watch Captain is... And, and we have, we've got our vampires. Uh, the Vi, yeah, Vri, Vri, Vrykos, Bloodborne. There's three of them, isn't there? Yes, yeah. Uh, so these guys are what are going to come out at night when the, uh, if you've taken too long going around during the, uh, during your games, uh, these are the kind of things that are going to pop up and start making you really need to get out of there quick because... I can't imagine they're going to be too pleasant. They've been painted here with some really, like, real... <laughs> like the members from Kiss. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so next we're going to get up to the big guys. So we've got our... big furry monster guy who is totally not Bram Stoker's Dracula when he is in his... Uh, what's it? Uh, Gore? No, not Gore form. In his Strigoi form. Uh, yeah. Vargaskaya. Vargaskaya. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It is a cool mini. I can see a lot of people are going to want this one just on its own. Um, I think Games Workshop will definitely release this one on its own at he's, some point. He's a big lad, is not he? Hmm. Uh, I mean, this might change up the just having the Vargolf mini. You'll have him, like you'll have the Vargolf and this guy. Will you? Will I get rid of the Vargolf? I would like. I, I, I would really like to hope that they will just redo the Vargolf in plastic. I think this might be a, a Vargolf redone in plastic. It may be. Um, we'll have to see. So that is that sprue. Now we've got. The big man, the big bad himself. Radical the wolf. I mean, like, if you, if you ever wanted a big bad vampire mini, this is it. He is really nice. Um, he's got this awesome gnarled sword. Um, he's rocking the biggest wolf cloak you could get your hands on. Or, in fact, he's rocking... Two? Yeah, he's he's got. There are two wolves. He's he's gone out there. He's killed two wolves, and he's just wearing them on his shoulders. If that doesn't tell you that he's a bad guy, I don't know what does. Maybe the fangs. Okay, now for the last thing that's in this uh, for the minis, we have two sprues. These are both identical, so we we'll only need one of these on show. And this will have all your skeletons, zombies, 
bats, rats, and objective markers. So you should have on there um, some death walker zombies. Yep. Dead walker, sorry. Dead walker zombies. Dead walker zombies. I kind of like them and then I kind of don't. There's, there's, a, there's a big... Um, yeah, there's a big divide on people's opinions on them. I quite like them. Um, they they make a lot of sense, uh, especially with the roots. You know, you you would imagine roots would grow through. That's grow through fine. Them. It's just every single one of them is apparently carrying their gravestone on their back. It's because the gravestone is pierced through them. Yeah, the, the just, gravestones all have giant spikes to go yeah, through them to keep them in place. But apparently, that's not enough. I'm just. Mm. If it was like one or two of them like that, then I'd be kind of like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're all kind of, all of them like it is kind of a bit much, I think. I mean, like, this one's got a fence. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's kind of a bit much. That's fair enough. I, li- I like it, but just not all of them like that. That's fair enough. I mean, if you really wanted, you can always just use the old Warhammer zombies. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I'll use the... Um... Oh, what are they called? The uh, Forgotten Worlds ones? The Fire Forge? Yes, yes, I know the ones you're presents. about. Yeah. They're awesome. They're pretty cool. All right. They uh, actually probably mix in quite well with these. Probably. As I said, then I could have my occasional one with the tombstone thing, yeah. and then the majority without me. Then I think I like it. Well, there we go. That's and the corpse wraps as well. Corpse rats. So, they're rats. They are pretty much rats. They are rats. Some of them have skulls for faces. Others are just rats. The bat swarms as well. They're pretty cool. Bat swarms. It's really nice to see Games Workshop actually releasing a decent bat swarm for... Do you I... know what? I've got a load of the uh, Lord of the Rings bat swarms and they're actually quite cool. Yeah. They're all metal they or fine metal. cast. Yeah. Yeah. The only trouble is when I was trying to bro- uh, I tried to um, drill something out for Dremel, and the wings are really sharp, and the drill stuck, and because my Dremel isn't trigger activated, oh. I, I smashed my fingers, got a lacerate right, the fingers to bits. Wow! Sharp. Here we go, Don't guys. Do that, yeah. Don't do that. Don't do what Jim did. And it's probably a good marker to live your life by that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do do what Jim says, not what Jim does. <laughs> One of these is not the same as the other. And then you've got the mysterious objects and the gravestones. Yeah, so we have a uh, a hangman gallows with a pointing skeleton. Just kind of cool. Is, is that if you get completely lost? It's like, oh, just, just, like, just go, go this way. <laughs> uh, e- even the undead point you in the right direction. And you've got uh, crows on... Monuments of keys, they're quite cool. Yeah. Uh, that is really cool, and that is very Ravenloft, Ravenloft-esque. Yeah. There's an art piece that I've seen that is a raven holding a key. So, there you go. And then the awesome skeletons, the Ulfen Watch. The Ulfen Watch skeletons. These are probably by far the best skeletons I think Games Workshop have ever released. Um, yeah, you can tell me otherwise. I think these are great. The ones they did for um, uh, Shakespeare, Underworlds, they were pretty cool. The Sepulchral Guard. Yeah. I do like those ones. I will probably paint these ones up to match those. The ones you got them. Because I've, I've got them in the cabinet downstairs. Yeah. The old spatula guard. Yeah. Yeah, they are great. And actually, I think that colour scheme would fit the setting. Uh, the very cold blues. and. Mm-hmm. Right. So that is that. We even have a cat. I think that's a cat. That might be a rat. Where's it might be cat? a big rat. Where's the cat? No, I think that's just a big rat. There's corpse rats, and there's one yeah. that they've called the blood rat. Ah, that might be this one. This big rat. He's a vampire rat. <laughs> what? I no. Uh, well, he might be. He's a blood rat. Maybe. So all of these minis are all push fit, as you have seen. Um... So no glue is necessary to build these. I would still use glue, though. It's always necessary. It's always necessary. All right, so now we've done that, we can go and look at the rest of the contacts in this box.
Okay. Now let's get into the guts of this. We've covered all the minis, uh, which are fantastic. Now we're going to look at the other parts that actually make the game the game. So let's start with my favourite thing, the dice. So we have a whole heap of just regular D6s, nothing fancy about them. And then we have a whole bunch of what are called action dice. So these would be used per character uh, for their different type of actions. Um, so we have 2D12s, 2D6s, uh, 2D8s, and a D12 die, which is used uh, for the quest dice. So this isn't used for the characters, so this can go away. You don't they need are that. a bit funky, the dice. They are really cool. So they're um, D12, but they're not. It's, yeah, it's a D12, but it just means it has, what's that, four two blips and two, no, four one blips and some empty spaces. So I'm guessing that the, the I'm guessing that it, it'll be a, a damage or to hit. Uh, yeah, so, so it I'm is. I'm guessing that the D12 has got the most successes. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, each dice has a higher percentage of hitting uh, or doing its damage or hitting a crit. Um, so if I grab the Orphan Watch, uh, we can see on here it uses the red D12 dice. And its regular damage is the same as its crit damage. Uh, so if it hits you, it's doing two damage with its rusted blade or rusted weapon. Um, I can imagine getting hit with a rusted anything is going to be unpleasant anyway. Um, so that's the dice. That's them covered. You were saying, I'm surprised they haven't released a, a, a limited edition fancy set of dice. Yeah, um, it would have been good. Um, Games Workshop have been really like hardcore on their dice game lately uh, with um, Underworld Shade Spiral. It's not Shade Spiral now. It's Beast um, Worlds. It's just Underworlds, isn't it? Yeah. It's Underworlds. We are currently in... It's not Beast Grave, is it? No, Beast Grave was the last one. I can't what this one is. I've not, fo I've not followed Underworld in quite a while now, so it's I'm a little bit the, out of um, tune. It's got the elf dude on the front thing. Couldn't tell, yeah. And it's got the Slanesh models in it, which are really cool. Yes. Yes, I've seen those. They are really nice. I, I'm really looking forward to the vampires that come out yeah, in their next see. set. And to be fair, the Chaos Warriors they've got out now are really nice as well. Um, right, so next thing up is the bases. Um, they are just regular Games Workshop bases. So we have 25s, 32s. We say these were 40s. 40s. And then the, this big one here. It's a 50 or a 60. Um, I will put up sizes and quantities right here. Round about here somewhere. Okay, now we'll get into the cards. There are lots of cards, all the cards. So to begin with, we have our hero cards. So, yeah, they're character cards, there should be eight of those. So eight character cards for our eight characters. There is a hidden character that I don't know if many people know about that if you buy the book, you get an extra character card. Um, you don't get an extra character model. You don't get an extra model, unfortunately, but it is just the... Uh, is it the Moor Wizard? Uh, it's a wizard. It's a wizard. It just uses the... Um, He's got a hat. <laughs> it just uses the Empire Wizard kit. Uh, so next up, we have all of our monster cards. Hostile reference cards. Hostile reference cards. Eleven of them. And these are all nicely done. Nice clear print. Good card stock. And the last thing we have in that type of card is the... Quest card. Quest card. So this just allows you to track what you're doing with that one. Next up, we have... It's the initiative cards. Yeah, there should be eight of those. Eight four eight. hero and four hostile. Quite nice looking cards. They all seem to represent each character individually, apart from the actual uh, 
character ones. Uh, they don't seem to have their own specific thing. Oh no, maybe they're not. Maybe they're uh, they're not just character based. Who knows? Cool it's cool artwork. You know, it's very obvious to tell. Good guy, bad guy. Uh, then you should have exploration cards. Exploration cards. Are these the ones with the exploration written across. There's a whole bunch of these showing the map tiles. Spawn locations. Spawn locations, unfortunately, is the same place where you can draw your treasure from and all your uh, all your goodies. Uh, that's pretty cool. And you've got the uh, raven or something on the back of those as well. Uh, yes, yeah, so they have the cool. cool raven on the back. Then you should have 35 discovery cards. And those are the ones with the yeah. key on the back. They yep. are indeed. A nice key on the back. And these are your treasure cards and trap cards, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and this, yeah I think yeah. yeah. Nice. And curses. And realmstone. Whatever that is. Realmstone, I'm sure, is a mechanic in the game that allows you to buy stuff. Oh, I'd imagine it's probably like a... Um, like in Blackstone Fortress, they had the was it the shape glass or something like that? Uh, uh, yeah, something yeah, else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They had a thing that you could then take back and upgrade yeah. with. Next uh, up, we have uh, encounter cards. Uh, so these are our okay, rusty swords, our twin swords. Um, so these will upgrade as we go. So as you're playing, you level up your character, and it will progressively make the game harder. Getting a bit of glare there, sort that out. Because it basically uses the same as the Blackstone Fortress yeah. uh, model where you you play cooperatively and then the game takes care of... The, yeah, the escalating. Rest. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Uh, then we should have 24 empowerment cards. The empowerment cards. I have like a funny face thing on the back. And this like really cool... I don't know what that is. I know it's a face, I can tell you that much, but I wouldn't... it's like a furnace? I don't know. It's cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, but these are all your weapons, um, like weapon empowerments, uh, like all kinds of upgrades and stuff like that. you got armor. Um, no spells. No spells. Weapons and armor. And then you should have eight trait cards. Uh, these ones here. So these ones unfortunately don't have any funky art on the back. And you can go hold of those. Uh, eight mortis cards. So these are just the same on both sides. They have this really cool little skull on them. And then other stuff. So we should have a sky vessel board. So this will be in the tile section which we'll get to now. And now we've got our tokens. So we have the Sky Vessel the Sky board. Sky Vessel board, yeah. Yep. Which, um, you have uh, daytime spaces, nightfall space. Mm, so our day quest and night tracker, cycle. Available destiny dice and discarded destiny dice. Yep. So I'm guessing this is where your available go and this is your discarded. Uh, they're doing the same thing as what they did in Blackstone Fortress, where any doubles you roll when rolling your destiny dice, or triples or quadruples, all get discarded. So you can't just have a whole thing of loaded sixes. Sounds about right. Yep. Um, then we've got our... Um, is that the initiative tracker? It's the combat tracker. The combat tracker. Same thing. Same difference. Um, and there's a leader token as and then, well. I'm assuming that is your turn. Like, who's who's going first? Kind of you token. Have to decide the leader. Yeah. And go from there, yeah. Ah, yeah, that was it. So that's the guy who does all the decision making and bits and bobs. Um, and you were right. There is an undead cat on that sprue. There's uh, there is um, two dire gargoyles and two norbone strays. There we go. Cats are that evil. They come back and turn into zombies. Uh, and then we have Just numerous. Token, token. <laughs> you never bury your, bury your pets up in that cemetery. And then we have numerous other tokens, bits and bobs that are also used throughout the game. Um, and the next thing we're going to look at is the actual tiles themselves for play. 
he's a really nice like if if it's really nice thick card stock so this isn't going to damage very easily um and yeah very nicely detailed you could use it well this is obviously going to be used for the game but you could totally use this for things like D&D or Pathfinder or yeah. any of your other kind of role play games squared out um, they're very generic enough that allows you to use them for whichever probably cemetery settings like Ravenloft yeah uh, <laughs> any, anything like castle setting works yeah. I suppose the kind of generic indoor castle thing I mean, yeah. there, there, there appears to be a pool full of blood and coffins. <laughs> you don't have to use the pool with the blood and coffins if you're not playing a sort of vampire type thing. Though. I feel like it'd be a waste. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you know, the rest of it is, is kind of pretty generic. I guess there's some specialist things. But... Yeah. Uh, and these are, of course, double-sided. So I'll just flip these around. And just as impressive on this side as they were the last. Uh, that's pretty cool, with all the big bone motif. Um, I'm sure if I had a big enough house for that, I'm sure I could try and convince my other half to let me have that. Sure that would happen. <laughs> last one. Ah, there we go. So this is blatantly the boss room it might well be I mean like it's got a musical a, change yeah that music, the music changes the lights get darker you see a health bar that just does not stop <laughs> and there yeah, that is that is it for the tokens and tiles okay so now we're going to go through the books uh, we've got a fair few so we have the rule book the main thing that we're going to need throughout the entire game. It's kind of important. It's a game. very important thing. You can't have a game without rules. Uh, this is a 39-page rule book, not including the back. So 40 pages of rules. Uh, the back will have a quick reference guide, which is very helpful for when you just want to get on with your game and not thumb through it. Then we have the quest book. Uh, this, What's in that, Marcus? Well, this, my friend, will have the whole story of the game. Oh, okay. So it's pretty in-depth. It's got maps, setups, everything you need to know about actually playing the game. It's even got character backstory uh, about, you know, our adventurers. Uh, at that same point, I wonder if it has stuff about the bad guys. I'm sure um, it does as you yeah. get to them, I'm guessing. Probably. Uh, it's got, you know, it shows a nice sit, uh, city-wide map. That's the same one that's on the uh, website. It is, yeah. I had a fun through that the other day. and uh, That looks pretty cool. Tells you where they all are in the uh, different districts. Uh, here we go. So there, it does have... We should get something like that. I should get Alan to do something like that for the big website. Rather than have, like, a really easy-to-read sort of, like, miniatures, <laughs> rules and things, we should have, like, a map that you have to navigate. The old miniature shop. <laughs> uh, next thing we have is the instruction manual. It's an instruction manual. Not much more to tell you. Um, here we go. Base sizes. Right there in the instruction manual. First page. 25, 32, 40 and 50. Uh, and it will tell you what bases are needed for what minis. Literally how many of each base you get? Yes. Yes it does right there uh, so you get 150 640 1732 and 3625 uh, I will this will also have been put up earlier in the video but it is written down there um, everything's push fit so you don't need to use glue you totally are going to use glue um, when you're putting push fit model together, be very careful. Try not to get glue in the actual hole uh, because that then forms like a kind of seal that stops the pegs from going any further. And then you've got those big gaps in your minis that don't look very good. Um, and then oddly enough, uh, for the observant reader, um, the dwarf wasn't in there. He's he come a ratter. 
he, he yeah, he comes separately. Um, so yeah, he's, he, he's in here. Ah, uh, maybe they made some, a mistake. But they've missed something. What have they missed? Um, I think it's to do with this pipe bit here. Uh, A29B. So they've added a piece that allows him to... Ah, there's no peg for the backpack on the backpack. So you have to put in the peg for the backpack separately. That's that's an oversight. <laughs> that's why it's but, but yeah, there we go. And something that a lot of people have asked me for. Yes, you do get a war scroll for all your characters and monsters in this box. How do they look? Are you actually going to field them, do you think? Or are they... Uh... It, I mean, I... I've not played AOS in a very long time, so I couldn't really say if these are even actually good. But you now have the option to do so. That's a nice fold-out piece right there. Center fold, if you will. And you've even got war scrolls for the bad guys as well. There we go. Like Blackstone Fortress, we have our sealed envelope. I will not be opening this because I will be playing this game as well. So I'm not going to ruin it for myself. Uh, and then we get a nice little art piece. Uh, A5. With a little flyer bit. This is the unfortunate thing about this box. It, most of the Games Workshop boxes that have come out recently have all come with nice art pieces in the box, a nice little card piece that you can stick on your wall or frame. This one doesn't, unfortunately, which is a bit of a negative. Uh, all you get is this. It's cool. It's not an art piece. But all in all, I'm happy with this box. Uh, it's really nice. All the minis are nice. The rules, I'm sure, are going to be nice and easy to follow. Um, at some point, I will do a Let's Play or a you know, watch me roll dice video probably when the pandemic's all over and I'm allowed to be within arm's reach of people to play games properly. Um, but until that time... Oh, you also get a little Ziploc bag to put the tokens in, which is quite nice. Yes, yes you do. You get many bags. All the bags. So many bags. Lots of bags. These are very useful. Stops you from losing all your stuff. Yeah. What do you think, Jim? What's your what's your two cents on this set? Really nice model. We knew they were really nice models, so we got all the pretty yeah. models, so, you know, stunning models. Um, Blackstone Fortress is good fun to play, so I'm sure this will be really good fun to play. Um, looking forward to getting some paint down on the models, to be honest with you. Oh, God, yes. They are nice, nice models. Yeah. Painting guides at some point will follow. Um, along with the... to work out how much I'm going to have to charge for a fully painted box because somebody's bound to ask me at some point. Oh, most definitely. Uh, I, I've seen numerous posts of people saying that they will quite contently take cash for painted minis and vice versa. But yeah, there we go, guys. Uh, that has been a Warhammer Quest Curse City unboxing. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, if you'd like to see any of my further videos, please subscribe. If you could leave a comment down in the comment section below and hit that thumbs up button. Until next time, guys, roll on.